Hallelujah. Now you can be seated. Good morning, dear brothers and sisters. Good morning, Father. Now, before I turn to the gospel and, I want, and dive into it, I want to remind you of the five main purposes why we exist as a church here in San Pedro. Purpose number one is we exist to love God with all our, our heart. In other words, to worship God. That's why we're here this morning. Number two, we exist to love our neighbor as ourselves. ourselves. Perfect. Number three, we exist to form good friendships, holy friendships here in the church. Number four, number four we exist to share the gospel. That means to evangelize the world, beginning in San Pedro. And finally, number five, we exist to help you grow in holiness as a disciple of Jesus, to help you become the best version of yourself. So this is our purpose. These are the five reasons that we exist here as a church in San Pedro. Now with that said, keep that in the back of your mind and turn with me to today's gospel according to John chapter 21 verse 1 to 19. And in today's gospel, which takes place at least like a week and a half or two, maybe after the resurrection, we find seven of Jesus' disciples gathered at the Sea of Tiberias, also known as the Sea of Galilee. I've had the privilege of being there seven times, and it's awesome. And though the disciples had already had at least two incredibly powerful and life-changing experiences of Jesus risen from the dead, we get a sense that here at the Sea of Galilee, the disciples are sort of just waiting around, bored, not really knowing what to do next. So Simon Peter comes up with a great idea. Verse 3, I'm going fishing. In other words, Peter wants to return to his former way of jo- his former job. To return to his former way of doing things. Perhaps also, perhaps also almost seems tempted to go back to his old lifestyle. The same thing happens to many of us. Some of you have had a very powerful religious experience in your life. A powerful encounter with Jesus. Maybe at a retreat or a conference or at some prayer gathering or at mass. And immediately afterwards you're on fire for the Lord. But after a while... After a few weeks, after a couple of months, maybe a couple of years, you you begin to lose the fervor. The fire starts getting small. You become impatient, maybe even frustrated, not really knowing what to do next, how to serve the Lord next. And you start losing your sense of mission and purpose. and, and, And you're just sort of going through the motions. And the next thing you know, you're tempted to go back to your old lifestyle to the old man, to the old woman. Go back to the old ways of doing things. Back to your old sins. Back to doing things your own way. Now, if this has happened to, do, to you, then you're a little bit like Peter, who just said, I'm going fishing. I don't care about you guys. I'm not sure what you guys are going to do, but I'm going to go fishing, because when things get boring, I go fishing. And today... Many people start fishing for love in all the wrong places. Fishing for happiness, fishing for a sense of purpose in their life. And some people will stay all night here at the clubs in San Pedro, fishing for love in all the wrong places. Now, actually, some of the best fishing does take place at night. Back then, they used torches. And so the disciples went fishing in the middle of the night, and what did they catch? Nada, nothing. A whole waste of time. Ni mais, how they say in my in Mexico. And you know why they caught nothing? Because whenever you're going backwards from God's plan for your life, <coughs> you will catch nothing. Nothing good at least. Now the apostles admitted their failure, and then they obeyed the Lord, and they received a huge blessing, a miraculous catch. About 26 years ago, I was in Mexico on a four-week spiritual retreat called the St. Ignatius Spiritual Exercises. Four weeks of prayer. And I was meditating on this exact gospel. And in my meditation, I remember very clearly, I was trying to be the part of San San Pedro, of St. Peter. And I remember using my imagination in my prayer 
to, to look at the gospel, to live the gospel through the eyes of St. Peter. And as soon as John told me that it was the Lord on the shore, just, just like Peter, in my mind, in my imagination, I dove into the water and I began to swim toward Jesus. And I remember clearly I was swimming freestyle, you know, like this. Then I got tired and I switched to the breaststroke, like this. Finally made it on the shore and Jesus had the breakfast and, and, and I saw myself on the shore eating breakfast with Jesus. Great time of prayer. And everything was awesome until Jesus decided to ask me a question. Eduardo, do you love me? Just like he asked Peter. And I thought about it for a little bit. And you know, what I, you know what I answered the Lord? I said, no, Lord, I don't love you. I'm sorry, I don't love you according to your definition of love. I love you maybe according to my definition of love, which is actually just self-love, a self-love which manifests in, in pride many times. And I said to him, Lord, I'm sorry, but I got to be honest with you. Now, for you to understand why I said that, I need to give you a little lesson in Greek. Are you ready? Now, there is actually four Greek words that can be translated love in the, in, in the English language. And each of these words is very different. Now, the first Greek word is, please repeat after me, eros. Eros. Eros, eros means a spousal love that rises from a physical, from a sexual attraction, romantic attraction. Now, the second Greek word is, please repeat after me, sturge. Sturbe. Now, sturge means a love that rises from a natural affection of a family. It's like the love between a family. It's like between the mother or the father and their child. That refers to sturge love, which is very different than eros. Now, the third Greek word is, repeat after me, filio. Filio. Now, like Philadelphia, it's a city of brotherly love. So filio means brotherly love. It is a love that rises from a deep friendship. It's an emotional connection. It's a love between great friends. And this is one of the purposes of our church here is to get you guys to love with filial love. Great friends here. Now, finally, the fourth Greek word is, repeat after me, agape. Agape. Now, agape means a divine love. It comes from God himself because God is love. Agape is a sacrificial love that is total and complete, a love that's willing to die for the other. Agape love is an act of the will, not the emotions. Agape love is stronger than any fight, stronger than any financial problems, stronger than any illness or hardship or problem or storm in your life. Agape is a love that is stronger even than death. It transcends death. It never ends. As disciples, you and I, are called to love Jesus with agape love. That's our first purpose, why we exist as a church. To love him with agape love. To love Jesus above ourselves and to love ourselves, but only for him. Only for him. For example, the first two times that Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? Jesus actually said, do you agape me? That's the word he used. In other words, Peter, do you love me like I love you? Do you love me so much that you're willing to die for me, Peter? But Peter responded all three times, not using the word agape, but using the word filio. In other words, Peter said, yes, Lord, you know I like you as a friend. We're friends, Jesus. I, I love you as a friend. It's not what Jesus asked him. That's why I said to Jesus, no, Lord, I don't love you according to your definition of love. I love you according to maybe my definition of love. Today, 26, days, 26 years later, I would answer, yes, Lord, I do love you with all my heart. But even that is not enough. Even that is not enough. You know, in a marriage, but also in a family, and also in our church, these four loves, eros, sturge, filio, and agape, are meant to burn very brightly like a huge fire of love, a light in the darkness of San Pedro. So what can, what can a marriage do to recover their lost romance, the lost eros? What can a family do or a church do to recover the lost friendship or the lost agape love? Well, we begin by doing what Jesus did. 
In verse 15, Jesus asked Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Now, I would have thought that Jesus would have first asked Peter, Peter, why did you betray me? Or maybe give him a little chastisement. Peter, forget about being a pastor. You're a coward. Give me back the keys. Give me back the keys to the kingdom. But Jesus didn't say that. Instead, he asked Peter, do you love me? How many times did he say it? Ask him. Three times. Three times so that his three denials are repaired by three declarations of love. There's an important lesson for all of us here. If you want to begin to restore your relationship, the love in your marriage, in your family, in our church, don't ask, why did you betray me? Don't ask, why did you scream at me? Why did you abandon me? Don't ask, why were you unfaithful to me? Why did you do that to me? Don't ask why. It said simply ask, do you love me? I need to know that you really love me. And notice that Jesus asked, do you love me more than these? In other words, do you love me more than your friends? Do you love me more than the sports? Do you love me more than the fishing? Do you love me more than your work? Do you love me more than the drugs and the booze, more than the pornography? Do you love me more than the money? Do you love me more than the material possessions? Do you truly love me? I need to know. You see, love heals and repairs the betrayal. Love can be restored. We can actually learn how to love each other again. I've seen it. For example, in marriages, like through Marriage Encounter or through Retrovi, which I'm hoping these marriage weekends to bring here next October in, to San Pedro, or with books like The Five Love Languages, I've seen married couples and even families learn how to love each other again. Learn how to love each other again. Now, the third time Jesus asked the question, he didn't use the word agape. He simply said, Simon, son of John, do you filio me? In other words, do you love me as a friend? You see, if Jesus couldn't receive Peter's agape love, then he was willing to settle for now for his friendship love. It's okay, Peter. If you can't love me with agape love, then just love me as a friend. Because in a few weeks, I know that the Holy Spirit will descend upon you. And then you will love me with agape love. In fact, you're going to love me so much, you're going to give your life for me, Peter. And he did. Okay, let's apply all that we have learned so far. Listen carefully. If you are seated next to your husband or your wife, then please turn to them and ask them this. Do you love me with romantic love? Could you ask them that? Just turn, don't be a shy. Do you love me with romantic love? That's eros. Now you gotta say yes. You gotta say, hopefully you say yes, okay? That's okay. And if you did, things are getting good now, okay? Now, if you're seated next to your parents or your children, your family, please ask them, do you, do you love me with family love? Can you ask your family? Do you love me with family love? Good. Hopefully you said yes, okay? That's sturge love. That's sturge love. Okay, now if you are seated next to a friend, just like a friend, please ask him, or any parishioner, please ask him, do you love me as a friend? Could you ask that? Do you love me as a friend? I do. <laughs> That's filial love. Good. Now here's the final question, the big one. Please ask the person next to you. Do you love Jesus with agape love? Ooh, that's a big one. Do you love Jesus with agape love? Think about that. That's what Jesus asked. Now if you wish, just repeat after me. Lord, you know everything. Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. You know. You know, unfortunately, there are many people that say, oh, yes, I love Jesus. But if you ask them, well, do you go to church on Sunday? Or do you pray every day? Do you, like, do you ever read the Bible and grow? Oh, no, I just don't have time for that stuff. 
then you know what? You don't love Jesus. Not with agape. Don't deceive yourself. Or some people say, oh yes, I love Jesus with all my heart. Yet you support like legalized abortion? Then stop deceiving yourself. You don't love Jesus with agape love. Or you see, the person that truly, you see the truth, the person that truly loves Jesus with agape love, desires to know him, desires to obey him, desires to serve him, and he is even willing to die for him. That's why I hesitated and I said no to him at first, 26 years ago. Let me give you another example. Let's go to the first reading today from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, verse 27. Now in this first reading, the high priest, the same one who condemned Jesus, he, he, tells the, he told the apostles this, we gave you strict orders to stop teaching in the name of Jesus. In other words, he, he threatened them. But Peter and the apostles, by this time, they were on fire with the Holy Spirit. This was after Pentecost. They weren't even afraid of death. And check out what they said to, to the high priest. Please repeat after me. We must obey God. We must obey God. Rather than man. That's it. That's a manifestation of agape love. Willing to die for God. If you are, for example, if you're at work and someone wants you to steal something from work and you say, hey, or they say to you, hey, just stick this thing in the bag and shh, don't tell anybody. You give it to me afterwards. How are you going to respond to them? We must obey God rather than man. Nah. Or if your spouse says, nah, this Sunday, let's not go to Mass. Why? Well, why not? I just, I feel lazy. I just, let's watch television. How are you going to respond? We must obey God rather than man. Somebody offer you drugs here in San Pedro. They're all over the place. Hey, come on, you want some? What are you going to say? We must obey God rather than man. man. Or girls, your boyfriend wants to have sexual relations with you before getting married in the church. And he tries to manipulate you by saying, but I really do love you. I really do love you. How are you going to respond? We must obey God rather than boyfriends. Yes. These are examples of loving Jesus with agape love. Go do likewise. But if you're not sure if you actually love Jesus, don't be distressed. You're a bit like Simon Peter. Ask the Holy Spirit to empower you with agape love. And the Holy Spirit can certainly rekindle the fire of love in our church, in your family, in your marriage. And then rejoice. Because the one you love, it truly is worthy to receive power and riches, wisdom and strength, honor and glory and blessing forever and ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen.